Good morning. Thank you. Um, it's a delight to be here. Um, thank the TED uh, Youth Committee for uh, inviting me. And it's uh, thrilling to see um, such a wonderful, energetic group here. And I'm going to talk technical. <laughs> um, and I'm going, to say, I'm going to try to convince you that uh, technical is not hard. right? It's the ideas and the insight that you can provide, um, even to a robot, that can be really, really helpful. All right? So um, I'm a professor in robotics at Oregon State University. And my talk is going to be focused on what robots can learn from people. Robotics is one of the hardest areas uh, today. And it's one of the hardest fields because robotics applications are moving out of rigid industrial settings to more human, everyday environments. Okay. 30 years ago, robotics used to be only in the factories. Okay. So here you see about 20 or 30 robots that are assembling cars in a factory. But now, robotics is moving into a much broader area. We see uh, robotics technology used in autonomous cars, such as what Google has done. And several universities, uh, universities are working towards bringing autonomous cars onto the road to improve safety, for example. We see uh, robotics technology being used in um, uh, robotic surgery to improve the performance of surgeries. We see bipedal robots that walk alongside humans. And we are even able to send robots into space and to explore new planets for us. And one of the hardest topics uh, today in um, uh, robotics is developing robotic assistants for our homes, particularly in helping the seniors and the disabled. In this picture here, we see um, a robot trying to help um, assemble uh, and manipulate objects on a table. Okay? And here, we see a, a robotic arm attached to a wheelchair helping a disabled person uh, pick up and uh, grasp things. Okay? And the key idea here is we need robot hands uh, to, assist, uh, to help the robot assist us. Right? It's not enough if the robot is just moving in our homes, but we really needed to do things at home, uh, physically interact with objects. And, and that spawns the field of robotic grasping. Okay? Robotic grasping is basically how can you program a robot to manipulate everyday objects. Okay? And people have been developing software using math and physics-based techniques to figure out what is the best way to grasp an object such as this clicker or a, or a coffee mug or a bottle of water, or a cell phone. All right? So basically, they write math. The researchers write math to, given the, uh, the shape of the object and the 3D model of the object, the software will search the entire space to figure out where to place the wrist of the robot hand and where to place the fingers so as to securely grasp this object. At the same time, people have been designing hundreds of robot hands since 1983 until now. Okay? So these robot hands have different shapes, different designs, different actuation or motors inside, different um, um, uh, tendon routings, cables, motors, you know, all kinds of interesting designs. Now, I just want to give you a magnitude of the investment that's gone into robotic grasping research alone over the last 30, 40 years. Okay? Millions of dollars have been spent in exploring this problem. Hundreds of researchers have built systems, both software and hardware. And there have been several publications on the same topic of how to design hands, how to program uh, robot hands to pick up this object, okay, so that they can now use these robots in our home environments to help, uh, to help people. But unfortunately, this has not worked. Okay? And the reason is that robot hands are still not able to grasp objects securely. Okay? I'm going to show a quick video here. I have this simple bottle dispenser that's placed in a, in a known location right in front of the robot. 
and the robot knows what's the shape of the object, and all the robot has to do is go in there and pick up this object once it figures out where to place the fingers and where to place the wrist. And here's the video. So the robot goes in, it figures out where to place the fingers, and when it's closing the fingers, the object slips out, okay? So even if you have a lot of time figuring out where you want to go and where you want to place the fingers, the last few millimeters of the robot movement can cause the grasp to completely fail, okay? So this can be inc incredibly frustrating for the, both the, uh, for the robotic researcher, right? You spend so much time designing the system, but then the last few millimeters of that physical contact causes the grasp to fail, right? And the point I want to make here is all the math and the physics-based modeling that we have tried to use and brute force computing, right? Um, they basically throw, a, a, you know, many, many cores of computing, many uh, big computers to explore where to place this wrist and hand to pick up this object, but that does not work. And the main reason is that the friction and the contact models of the fingers inter interacting with the object actually cause it to fail. Okay, it's not exactly, it's not easy to model those things carefully. And the, it's a hard problem, okay, and that the robotics community is dealing with right now, but it needs to be solved if we want robotic assistance to help us. And who would not want one, right? So the question is, how can we improve robotic grasping when all these math and physics-based methods have not worked, okay? So I had an idea. The last time you picked up an object or gra and you did something with it, did you actually think where to place the fingers, where to place, uh, how much force is to apply with the fingers on this object, right? We do this almost spontaneously, right? And that's because we have strong internal models that we have developed for this kind of physical interaction. And I mean, when I mean an internal model, it's basically, you know, uh, these are things that we have learned as babies and kids how to manipulate objects or those toys that you played with when you were young, they're actually helping us right now to do things effortlessly, okay? So this begs the question, can we transfer the human grasping method to robots, okay, without going into the complex math and, and physics of it, okay? So if we can do this, this is powerful because then we just have to observe humans and then encode that into the robot without doing very complicated math. So we did what is called a very simple human subject experiment. So we brought people into our robot uh, lab and we let them play with the robot, right? So we asked them to teach the robot where they would place the wrist of the robot and the fingers of the robot to grasp an object, right? So here we see the robot arm and the robot hand and the, and we see a stapler on this on the table, and the task for the um, person was move the robot in, arm and hand in to the right location where you would grasp the object. Okay, very simple, right? There's no math involved. And so we collected a bunch of uh, hum, um, human planned grasps, or grasps that people provide, okay? We had about 50 or 60 of those grasps. And at the same time, we wanted to compare the, the human grasps with grasp pro provided by a state-of-the-art computer algorithm, okay? So that we can see which set of grasps perform better, okay? So we had this program called GraspIt from Columbia University, and that basically, basically uses these physics-based metri metrics and math to search for the best grasp. So given a 3D model of an object, the computer would simulate where the fingers and wrist should be to figure out where exactly the grasp, um, what type of grasp to do. So just a quick uh, note, it takes about 30 minutes to search about 135,000 configurations of placing the wrist here or here, here, and so on, right? And then it'll tell you what it thinks are the best grasp. So we have two sets of grasps, one given by a computer and one given by a human, okay? And I want to highlight here the human and the computer are giving the exact same information, okay? And the information is where should I place the wrist and where should I place the fingers, right? Nothing more, no more information. No information about the forces that the fingers are applying, no information on the sensory feedback, nothing of that sort. 
And I'm sure now you're dying to find out, um, you know, we, when we did the tests, so we basically uh, sent the robot arm in and executed those same exact grasps. And we picked up the object and we shook it to make sure that it was a secure graph, right? So if the object fell out, right, uh, it, was a, it was a failure. If the object stayed in, it was a successful grasp, right? And so we did uh, probably, you know, 1,000 or more trials just to make this happen. So I'm sure now you are very keen to see which set of grasps did better. And not a big surprise, the human planned grasps performed better than the computer planned grasps, 91 to 77%. Okay? Now, you may say, of course, a human is smarter than a, than a computer, right? But I want to highlight again here that the human and the computer gave exactly the same information, right? Except the computer had some way of approaching the same problem, whereas the human had a non math based, physics based approach, and he just used this intuition. Okay, so it begs the question, what is different about the human plant grasps? Okay, and so we then dug into this a little bit deeper, and we said, well, for every single grasp that we have, whether it is human plant grasp or a computer grasp, we can evaluate certain heuristics that the robotics community has been using for the last 30 years. And a heuristic is basically a method, right, that, um, that prescribes a certain way to, um, uh, perform the grasp, right? For example, one of the heuristics is finger placement. So if you have a two-finger grasp, that's weaker than a three-finger grasp because now you can apply forces in all directions, okay? And a grasp with the fingers is weaker than a grasp with the entire palm, right? Because now you're enveloping the object. So these are heuristics. These are methods that people just encode in, right? These are not scientifically developed methods yet because these are just guesses. Okay, so we took all these heuristics that the uh, robotics community has come up for the last 30 years, and we said, well, will one of these heuristics differentiate for us between the two sets of grasps? Why is the human plant grasps better than the uh, computer plant grasps? And surprisingly, we found that these math and physics-based heuristics could not differentiate between the two sets of grasps. Okay, what this meant was that even though there is still a difference in performance between the two sets of grasps, right, the, the physics-based heuristic methods are not able to say what is different about them. Okay, so if we want to improve the performance of robotic grasping from 77% to 91%, these heuristics are not going to be helpful. These physics and math-based heuristics are not going to be helpful. And they will not let us to go even beyond 91% to 100% success rate, right? So when was the last time when you actually picked up an object that right, you dropped it, right? It, it happens very, very rarely. Whereas when, if you use these computer-based methods, they would fail one in four times. So this had a stump, right? And this ha happens often in research where you don't really know what you're going to get from the whole experiment, right? Sometimes you have some guesses, but they may, they may not be the uh, they may not give you the solution immediately. So then we did some investigation further, and we actually noticed something. In the human plant grasps, the wrist of the human was aligned, sorry, the wrist of the robot was aligned with the object's principal axis. So if this was a bottle, the human's grasp would come in from the top or from the side, but not at an angle of 45 degrees. Okay, and in contrast, the automated grasp, which is on the right side, would come in at any awkward angle, right? So this was something that the computer algorithm was not, um, was not looking for to, to, to ensure that the wrist of the robot was not aligned with the object's principal axis, okay? So, so now we created a new heuristic or a feature that measured the robot's wrist orientation with respect to the object's principal axis. And we noticed, indeed, that the human grasps aligned with the object's principal axis almost immediately. Okay? So uh, on the y-axis here, I'm showing how the wrist orientation varied with respect to the object's principal axis, which is the primary axis of geometry for this uh, remote. Okay? 
In contrast, the algorithmic or computer plant grasp was just scattered all over. Okay? So the, now we have one feature that is able to distinguish between the two sets of grasps based on the wrist alignment. And, but the important question is, is this orthogonality, which is this new feature, is, is that able to explain the difference in performance? Okay? So what we then did was we fed back orthogonality back to the computer algorithm, and we improved the performance of the computer algorithm by 16% from 77% to 93%, okay? Just by including the simple feature of aligning the object uh, uh, wrist with the object's principal axis, okay? So I have a, a, a few take-home messages here. One is that it turned out that these physics-based metrics that, that we have been using for the last 30 years really were experimentally tested for the first time only when we were doing this work. So it was not clear how the different heuristics were actually being helpful in the first place. Second, these metrics that we have been using for the last 30 years uh, were not able to explain the difference between the two sets of grasps. And finally, just a simple heuristic from human grasping enables significant improvement in robotic grasping performance. Okay? So I just want to leave you with a couple of thoughts. Um, in robotics, if you want to improve how a robot is performing something, right, one good way is to just observe humans closely to find the methods that they use to perform certain tasks and transfer them to robots. That's number one. And number two is the human insight into these problems can sometimes even improve on hardcore math and physics. All right? So the idea is to take the human approach and take those tried and tested solutions and apply them to robots. Okay? And that's mostly what I have. Thank you. I'm really looking forward to speaking with you guys later.